Good evening, morning, afternoon, or wherever the hell you are on a planet, depending on your time zone. We are back. Should we call it season two or something like that? Total Rebuild, vlog number two. Vlog 31 altogether of my life. Uh, today, just gonna discuss getting back in action. I've been doing all my, my blood tests that I wanted to discuss last time, never got around it because they were a bit slow with my blood test results. Uh, how I'm training, how I'm recovering, and my food intake at the moment. So I got to the point where my weight would not shift. So not training three weeks, eating or average 10,000 calories a day, every single day. Uh, I got to a point where my weight would not shift and uh, I got stuck around 112, 113 kilos. This was the first week I started training again and uh, my food intake dropped down straight away to 8,000 calories, uh, which is normal because I just don't have so much time to eat anymore because I move more and straight away lots of inflammation and my weight has shot up to 116 yeah so fairly interested you know when people still talk about like calories in calories out yeah it's extremely important for weight loss not for muscle maintaining not for looking better not for performance and all those kind of things so i know exactly that i go to the point where my body would not change anymore because nutrient partitioning is just extremely in, how can I say, uh, increased when you are very fit, very lean, and uh, you haven't eaten food for a very long time. So tracking on my aura ring, my body temperature started to increase and as weeks went on, so the more I ate, the more my body temperature would increase. I have actually been to point, not at the moment yet, uh, last time when I tried to push my food as high as I can, uh, just sweating literally sitting and not sweating you know people call like meat sweats and whatnot so uh guys who are on trends they will know that they sometimes sweat all night and whatnot that happens with me when i eat a ton of carbs so i could literally go to bed and i'll be on fire and i'll wake up and i will weigh not a gram more than previous day because energy wastage is just throws it off because my body just don't want to be that big so obviously you start fidgeting a lot and, and all those kind of things, you know, when you diet, you never acknowledge that your weight loss stalls, you cut down your calories and then you start sitting around and just do nothing. Or you come home after work or whatever else and you need to go to the gym and do your cardio and do this and do, do that and you just don't do anything. <laughs> so even if you go to the gym, I have been to points where I sit down on equipment, I do my set. And then I close my eyes and I'll have like a nap between sets. Like, yeah, half a minute, 60 seconds or whatnot. I just close my eyes and just relax. So that's how bad it gets when you're, when you're in calorie deficit. So same is in calorie surplus. Your energy preserving when you're in calorie deficit. Your energy wasting when you're in massive calorie, calorie surplus. So that's nothing uh, unexpected that I couldn't gain any weight anymore. So obviously I needed to start doing something. Uh, or I could wait a couple more weeks until everything slows down and I just start storing fat, which is not very enjoyable, not useful and uh, absolute waste of time, you know, just I don't want to be big for sake of big. I'm already, I'm kind of compact size, overgrown male and to me being bigger for the sake of being bigger is not nice. If I can maintain this body weight and be physically active the way I want to be, so be it. Uh, if this means I need to stay on lower body weight, yeah, whatever, I don't care. So my training has changed completely at the moment. And uh, uh, thanks to Andy Triana, he helped me actually to put a training plan together where I was... Uh, main focus on movements will be predominantly on unilateral movements, explosive movements, working on energy systems. So rather than counting four sets of 10, 12 or whatever reps, I will be doing sets of 60 seconds. So that means like squatting for one minute or doing split squats for 30 seconds and then rest in 20 seconds and do it again for 30 seconds and rest for 20 again and so on and so forth. So throwing in some cardiovascular uh, stuff in the middle so like farmer's walks, uh, sprints with sledge, medicine ball throws, things of nature that we do when we are kids. But when we get 
older, uh, we stop doing these things and then we start complaining that we can't do them. Well, if you don't do something, you won't be able to do it. <laughs> That's just how it goes. If you train, don't train your muscle, it just disappears. You want it or not, you get detrained. So, whereas people don't acknowledge that they are crap at, let's say, doing plyometrics because they have taken out plyometrics of their training. Whereas when you are a child, you just jump around like they're like a grasshopper anyway. So, uh, yeah. People, I think, should really probably invest in understanding how the most advanced athletes can sustain their athleticism later in life. Yeah, obviously, there will be some involvement of supplements, drugs, and whatnot, but training as well has improved massively. Look on uh, Tom Brady. He's probably the brightest example because he's written a book about how he maintains his performance. When he was young, he was training predominantly for strengths, which he had great coaches and whatnot. And the older he gets, the more he pushes his emphasis towards playability, which is ability to move your body at really good pace and not get injured. When you're younger, you don't take in account those kind of things so because you do a lot of things that are involving weird movements regardless. So you, let's just say, for example, when I was... 16, 15, 17, 18, whatever. I would just go and get out, get drunk, and then wrestle with my friends on the ground. You know, you get like 30, 40, 50, you're not going to go out and get pissed and wrestle on the ground with your friends. <laughs> you know, you, but that would not be in, in, in my thinking at that age. I would not think that, oh, this is actually improving my playability. Whereas now I, got, I get older, stronger, bigger, this and that. You kind of want to preserve the energy by not doing these things. And you're not doing much of a good for yourself, actually. Uh, we had a extremely advanced bodybuilder back home in Latvia. Uh, oh, God's sake. I uh, forgot to say him now. Alexander. Oh, shit. Vitaly Alexandro. Google's a guy. And he was dancing. A lot. So he was shorter guy, but ridiculously massive and he moved flawless and he always attributed that because he's like i just go partying every weekend if you want to be a good poser you need to learn how to dance you know same same happens with, with anyone else if you want to get bigger stronger but you're focused only on being bigger and stronger something else is gonna go if you stop doing things that you do when you're younger that you don't even acknowledge you're doing uh, you're gonna give away your ability to move well. So this is why my training always changes throughout the year. I never change just for hypertrophy. I always do my silly mobility drills and things like that. It's bigger you get, the harder it gets to move like that. So take that in account. Do not neglect your ability to move for extra 200 grams on a scale, which no matter what you do, if you're performance-based or if you're aesthetics-based and whatnot, in a long run, it's going to play against you. That, that's my th pure belief, that the longer you may can maintain your ability to move well, the longer you can enjoy actually training hard. So, that being said, yeah, my food, uh, food has dropped down to 8,000 calories. Uh, I do eat well. And then I add some garbage on top of that because obviously it's fairly hard to eat so much food just from clean foods. So what I mean by that, I would wake up, I'll, I would have my eggs, my whatever else, some bread and whatnot. And then on top of that, I'll have some cookies and cookies milk. Or later on, I'll have fish, some mackerel. I like enjoy a higher fat intake now just because I feel that food sticks, so to speak, a bit better. Uh, I don't need to kind of lose body fat anymore, so I don't need to limit my body fat in, uh, my fat intake as, as low as I did. So at the moment I'm floating around two to three grams of fat per kilo, just to make sure that I have more variety in my food intake. It's a bit more enjoyable. So actually, actually like even though I don't have any issues with appetite at the moment, which was one of the reasons why I was dieting, it's still I don't want that to kind of lead to bulking fatigue where you just don't want to eat food and uh, yeah I do feel better on, on a bit higher fats because obviously on, on low fats your, your skin starts to get like dry and uh, you, you just don't feel extremely healthy if you maintain it a bit for too long uh, 
And when I had a great opportunity to talk to Tom Platz, he was doing exactly the same. He would periodize his approach. He would have higher fat diet for such and so many weeks, so many months and whatnot, then higher carb and, and so on and so forth. So always try to adapt to what fits the best for you. And like we always talk about periodization and whatnot, this is why I change everything because same like when you take some PEDs and whatnot, your body gets tired of it and you just can't get anything out of it anymore. Same as your body to getting used to diet or training style. So there's always something that's kind of gets left behind and you don't look after that. Uh, you're just limiting your progression itself. So as it speaks, uh, as it's said now, I want to maintain my size. I'm fairly, well, I just weighed myself. I was 117 kilos. So I want to maintain this size, get leaner, and be more athletic at this size. Usually at this size, I can't do much. <laughs> uh, when I get 120 kilos, I can't even fit in my own, own car. Like I said, I'm not large, but 120 kilos for my height is a bit challenging. And uh, let's just drop through uh, my blood tests. I did post blood tests on YouTube, to be honest, but I'm gonna run through them again. I, I've got some in front of me. They're actually better than I had uh, them in July. So my hemoglobin is lower than it was. My uh, urea is extremely low and my kidney health is the best it's flipping ever been. But that's probably because I did blood tests after three weeks of not training at all. So my EGFR is 90 odd. I have never seen those kind of values before. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, liver is great, ALT slightly raised, but that's to be expected uh, because I took some overalls in the last couple of weeks. Uh, stopped it. And uh, so protein is great, SHG, it's SHBG is a bit low, which is normal. Uh, and then we have no signs of diabetes, actually my HbA1c is better than uh, when I was on diet and uh, that was over 1000 grams of carbs a day with no uh, added nutrients, supplements, or anything that would help me to deal with those carbs. So no insulins, no metformins, nothing, nothing of that sort. Not even chromium, <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, cholesterol was a bit high on this reading, but marginally over the limit on some readings, but I had 12,000 calories on day before doing blood test. And half of those calories were burgers and pizzas. <laughs> so, yeah, that was going to be there anyway. So, inflammation markers are very low. Uric acid is very low. Uh, a bit of serpentine is an iron, but it's marginal. And because I wasn't doing any cardio those last three weeks. So, vitamin B12, vitamin D, everything like that. So, my micronutrient intake is great. My thyroid is actually better than it was before. So uh, that those were two things that I was really kind of trying to focus on, kidneys and thyroid, see where they at, and they are both great, which means if needs be, we could jump straight on another on another hard push, which I'm not going to do probably for another couple of weeks because I got a surgery in front of me in the next 10 days or so. So uh, I'm going to talk about that a bit later. And... Uh, Testosterone, fairly low, well, fairly low, very low this time around, uh, because like I said, there's, there's no supplements for testosterone. Estrogen is very low because we did some, uh, finally uh, include some uh, estrogen uh, kind of manipulating things. And prolactin is a bit about normal, which never affects me. And uh, at, as it stands now, uh, there will be no nothing used to change any of this i'm still enjoying my training i'm not depressed and, and god knows what else so i don't need a testosterone shot uh but as it stands now everything is great i will kind of milk it out another week or two because next week i am going away to do a uh, dental surgeries that I had to deal with months ago and one of the reasons why i nearly never competed because i have to eat on one side and chewing on the other side is a bit challenging and it's expensive thing I need to do and I most likely will fly away abroad to get it done much cheaper and probably get done much more than I could have 
been able to do in the UK was save more money. But yeah, you'll see when I come back. I'll be one of those like, yes, finally everything's great. <laughs> so uh, my training is completely different every single day. I do not do body parts. I do not do push pulls legs. It's pretty much all body, all all way through. And main focus is on on beating up my energy systems. So challenging my ability to uh, tolerate high intensity for a longer period of time, which you kind of can do by resting less in between sets and whatnot. But it's just not fun, and it just doesn't really challenge you properly. Uh, so timed rests, timed sets, focus on uh, doing things that could strengthen my, uh, I forgot the word now, uh, basically all, all my posterior chain, so that, that will be my main focus, on making sure that I still had that knee injury and whatnot. It does not seem to be there, but at the same time, I will not push any kind of weight and rather will work on intensity or uh, in a uh, sense of just cutting down short, uh, shorter rest periods between sets rather than putting more load on my joints. Because let's be honest, I haven't trained heavy on my legs for nearly two years now. And I'm not going to rush that. I'm still going to work very slow. And whilst I was dieting, I was not pushing any weights higher. I just set myself on a certain amount of weight I'm going to lift. I just focus on that. Whereas now I will be building this up in uh, monthly blocks. So every four weeks I will be loading up my joints with more weight. And uh, I, as it stands now to get to that point, I will be just increasing my intensity through working harder on cardiovascular system and just challenging my energy systems rather than challenging my joints and muscles in sense of hypertrophy and, and those kind of things. So, but that's pretty much it. I'm, I've added some videos of how I actually trained, some, some snippets about I've added video how I actually look. Um, still look fairly presentable. Some people go on stage like that, which is just funny. And uh, I also added a s small clip of how I do my mobility drills after training. It is a bit challenging, a bit uh, like I jumped up a weight fairly quick. And like I said, I hadn't trained, I hadn't done cardio, I hadn't done any mobility drills or anything. I just want to see how my body reacts to that. And uh, yeah, I feel good. I feel really good at the moment. And hopefully this lasts. Appetite is high. Like I said, yeah, my calorie intake is, has dropped down. But at the same time, my body response to training is significant straight away. And instead of wasting that energy just by producing heat, that my body is actually using these calories to rebuild tissue. And uh, my training plan at the moment stands five days on, two days off. And I already had to take a day off after day three because even whilst I'm training, it doesn't feel much challenging. Afterwards, it's painful as hell. So I already had two massages this week, uh, extra rest day that I didn't want to take. And uh, yeah. I definitely am not ready to load my body with more resistance as I am using now. Uh, but it will be fun. I'm, I'm definitely going to follow up as well how I look. Uh, I don't need to make some measurements. I do want to figure out some kind of metrics that I can follow. But obviously, I'm timing everything, what I do, how much load I use, and, and all those kind of things. Uh, but I'm not worried like someone else would be, oh, is, is my arms gonna, are my arms gonna go into shrink? Is my chest is gonna get flatter? Is this gonna go when that? It just, it, if you got it, you got it. It's, you can't just build a lot of muscle and then waste it by doing training. As long as you do something physically active, your, your physique will be there. So stop doing this stupid nonsense that, oh, I can't do cardio because I'm going to lose all muscle. You no, know, if you lose a lot of muscle when whilst doing cardio, you probably didn't have a lot of muscle to begin with. Let's be honest. So stop bullshitting yourself. It's not good. <laughs> I'll leave you on that and I'll catch up with you next week. And I might be, yeah, uh, in different place next week. But it's all been fun. Drop me some comments. Drop me some questions. See where we're at. Uh, 
but like I said, everything so far is actually much better than I was expecting. Blood tests came back definitely much better than I expected. Uh, response to training is really good. Uh, appetite is extremely good. Uh, mental clarity is, is really well. Changing my business completely, which is a bit challenging, but something I'm kind of accepting that has to be done in sense for me to progress, but it is what it is. And uh, I'll, I'll update you next week how I feel about my training and eating and everything else after two weeks doing this. And on that note, I'll catch you soon.